This is 103.1 WVLP in Valparaiso, listener-supported, all-volunteer radio. Thank you, Burnham Brewing, for underwriting Left of Center. Burnham Brewery's Tap Room is located in Michigan City, Indiana, and they are open every day. For more information about their operations, they are found online at burnhambrewing.com. WVLP appreciates the financial support of Burnham. Hi, good afternoon everybody. I'm Callie Rosella and this is Spotlight on the Arts. And today we have, for our first half, we have the wonderful director, Mike Glorioso, who is directing Evil Dead the Musical at Chicago Street Theater. And we also have Tyler Mills, who is the lead playing the character of Ash in this amazing show that's coming up. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about how you got to be the director of this fun show and a little bit about it. Okay, uh, well, um, I pitched the show to Chicago Street um, about, like, two years ago, and um, it was something that, you know, it's um, knowing that there's a musical version of Evil Dead, which is a very popular movie franchise by Sam Raimi, and it was recently remade, actually, um, I think about two years ago, three years ago, um, it kind of takes the movie and... Um, makes it very, it's, it turns into a musical. It's a horror movie that it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's very slapsticky, very funny, um, but yet still has the horror elements to it um, with the blood and guts and the demons and things like that. Um, basically, the story is, is this group of college-age kids go to an abandoned cabin in the woods and they find the Necronomicon, which is the Book of the Dead, and they mistakenly um, play a tape, but they shouldn't, and they, um, the party slowly gets possessed by demons, <laughs> and uh, all, all heck breaks loose, and uh, um, the party actually uh, gets narrowed down so that Ash is the only one that's kind of left to kind of fight off the demon hordes and send them back to hell. So... Um, very funny, very tongue-in-cheek. Uh, we have a splash zone as well in the show, so a lot of Ooh. stuff going on with the show. Yeah. So, so basically, it's just your your basic spring break college kids thing that happens all the time to everybody, right? You know, you know, normal <laughs> things. You know, kids doing stupid things, uh, not knowing, you know, um, what kind of stuff they're gonna let loose on the world. Uh, but yeah, it follows the storylines of the movies pretty closely, um, both. Evil Dead 1, 2, and The Army of Darkness, so if people are a fan of those movies, they definitely will come and see a lot of the lines from it, a lot of the actions. Um, some of the songs actually kind of follow um, the lines from the movie. It is rated R, I would say. It's for more mature audiences because there's a lot of language in the, in the, in the movie and also in the, um, the musical we have as well, uh, so it's not for the faint of heart. So this is a, a more recent uh, 
production, a more recent musical, because it first came out, I believe, in Toronto in 2003 and then played off-Broadway in 2006. Now, did, had you seen it, or how did you know about this show? I knew about it through um, just hearing about it. It's uh, um, I subscribe to a, man, um, a magazine, uh, a Fangoria and other horror-type magazines, and one time they did like this article about um, musicals and plays that are horror musicals and plays that are um, available to do perform. And so I saw it, and then I was intrigued, so I looked it up on YouTube and um, heard some of the songs. I got the cast recording. Um, kind of just fell in love with it because it's it's one of my it's one of my favorite show, uh, movies as well. So it's kind of paying homage to that and making it and not taking itself seriously. And that's the biggest part of this. It's, it's scary, but it's funny. It's really hilarious, and um, it, there's something for everybody if you're if you're willing to come and uh, um, partake in the, the the madness that is Evil Dead. Great, Tyler. Tell us a little bit about this character Ash that you play and how you got involved in doing this and and your theater background uh sure yeah um Ash is a really interesting character um he starts off as just this you know college college guy works at a retail store with his girlfriend uh just wants to have a, a fun week with his friends and slowly descends into madness <laughs> as everything around him uh, uh pushes him towards it uh, as all of his friends get killed or possessed or what have you um i got into this uh, i actually did uh legally blonde with mike uh at memorial opera house and uh he told me he was doing it i auditioned and uh the rest is is history now so. is that was legally blonde the first show you've done or i mean uh, no no I've, I've done theater for a while now um I did Parade at 4th Street uh, okay. earlier this year. I did uh, some stuff in Chicago at Second City and stuff like that. So I've been doing it for a couple years now. So. All right, great. And um, tell us about this cast. Uh, it's an awesome cast. Uh, it's eight people. Um, everyone's incredibly talented, really, really funny. Um, it's been a blast to work with everybody. Um, it's actually really funny because a couple people uh, that auditioned, I actually went to high school with and did theater with them. So it's been a long time since we've done a show together. Um, but it's been great to reconnect and uh, meet new people. Um, everyone is very talented. So. And what has the rehearsal process been like? Um, <laughs> very fun. Uh, a lot of uh, fight choreography, a lot of dancing. Um, obviously singing and regular acting and blocking and stuff. Um, we do have a lot of special effects and uh, that's been a blast to work with. Uh, something very new as far as a show that I've done. <laughs> um, having a lot of uh, you know blood and spraying and all that stuff. So. All right, Mike, feel free to join in here, but explain oh. this whole uh, splash zone area and do you have to request being in the splash zone or do people just show up and it's like, oh, by the way, you need to wear this poncho? They, they are warned. <laughs> Sherry over at Chicago Street has done a really good job of warning the, the, the people who are sitting in the splash zone. You are in the splash zone. If you want to move, you can. Uh, it is the first three rows just to be safe. Um, there are parts of the show where, you know, um, different effects go off and they get um, thrown into the audience. Uh, it's kind of like going to a Gallagher show, but <laughs> not... But it's not watermelon. watermelon. <laughs> yeah. It's not watermelon uh, coming at you. Yeah, and it's, it's something that, you know, it's very unique to the show when they originally did it um, in Toronto and then back in, in Vegas as well. You know, they kind of incorporated the splash zone into it uh, to make it interactive for the audience as well. Um, so we do provide ponchos uh, free of cost to the people who are in the splash zone. And if they um, survive, which they will, uh, <laughs> they, get, they do get a little sticker at the end that says they survived the splash zone at Chicago Street. Oh, Theater. very cool. Yeah. So you get to go away with a little little badge of oh, honor man. that you that you made it through. Uh, so, Mike, tell us a little, I know you have been in the theater realm for a long time, but tell us a little bit about your background and also your directing background. Well, I've, um, I've done shows uh, since I came back into the area in 2004. I went away to college and did shows in Indianapolis, uh, did some professional work, things like that. Uh, you know, I did, uh, when I first came back to the area, I did a lot of stuff with Ross uh, Summer Musicals and also their studio space. And then over at um, Portage Community Theater before they shut down, down and then um, found a home over at the Memorial Opera House and Chicago Street Theater. But to me, it's just wherever has a good show, I'll go and do a show. Um, 
a lot of acting and um, on stage, which is which is fun, but it's a different monster when you're directing shows. Absolutely. And, oh gosh, and people who don't, it's like, oh, I could direct a show because I've acted. It's no, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely mirror someone that's directing. Ask them what they how they do things because every director is different. Um, it's with with me. It's I like to make sure that you know, especially with a show like Evil Dead, there are so many technical elements that we want to get the tech taken care of as soon as we possibly can so the actors can get used to that those kind of effects and it seems funny to me but most of the shows that i've directed in the past couple years have always been movies that have been turned into plays or musicals or vice versa uh last year i mean this year i did legally blonde the musical i'm doing evil dead uh the year before that i did night of living dead at chicago street and i also did grease and Glass Menagerie, so if there's a movie attached to it, I pretty much will direct it, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. All right, so this show is going to be opening up this weekend, correct? Yes, yes, Friday and Saturday is our opening weekend. All right, and how do people go about getting tickets for this, and tell us about how long the run is and everything else. Okay, Um, you can contact the um, box office, obviously, um, at Chicago Street Theater. Um, I'm looking up the number right now, trying to... Oh, I can help you with that. It's actually 219-464-1636, extension 1. Yes, Uh, and the run, we run um, every weekend in October. We have a couple Thursday performances. The run time is about an hour 45, um, depending, uh, you know, sometimes with shows, you always give a rough estimate, but hour 45, it's a pretty nice, tight show. Um, And uh, on the Thursday performances are are at 7.30, Um, our regular performances are at 8, and we do have one matinee that's at 2.30, which is that opening weekend, which is, I believe, the 14th. Okay. And then on Saturday the 13th, Mm -hmm. is there a performance that day as well, or just the... There is, but it is sold out. That's our special Spanguli performance um, that we have. Okay. And that, that's completely sold out already, which is great. And um, the tickets are selling fast. So if uh, people want to see the show or, you know, want to experience um, Evil Dead, they do need to call and uh, reserve their, their seats fast. Great. Now, Tyler, tell us a little bit, when you're not playing Ash or on stage doing things like that. What else are you doing in your spare time or as your profession? Uh, yeah, I'm, I uh, work for a liquor distributor, actually. I sell wine, uh, which has been great. I've been doing that for about five years now. And you um, didn't bring samples? I I'm did. very I'm disappointed. So sorry. <laughs> um, I also uh, I do a lot of filmography, uh, uh, videography, sorry, uh, Aspire Productions. We do uh, wedding videography, uh, small uh, business commercials and stuff like that. So. Now, you started out doing theater in high school, I am assuming? Yes, yes, Okay. Yes. So is this like a passion of yours that it you is. just had for a it long is. time? It is. I took a, a long break for a while and hadn't done any shows for uh, like almost eight years, and uh, I really got back into it this year. Uh, this is my like fourth show in a row now, so, Great. Uh, and it's been a blast. Yeah, I love it. So. Great. And Mike, what about you? When you're not directing or in a show, what do you do? Uh, currently, I am working at the Pines Village Retirement Community as their programs and events uh, manager. Um, I, my residents are really um, excited when they, they came to see Legally Blonde, um, but I told them they're not allowed to come see Evil Dead. So <laughs> it's probably, it probably wouldn't be appropriate for them. But we do have some that are like, oh, I'm still coming. I'm like, okay. So, uh, yeah, I work, I work at Pines Village. Oh, awesome. And then what's coming up for you after this? Do you have anything else in the works? Have you been proposing shows other places and things that we can look forward to in the future for you? I have proposed a couple shows um, for the next season for Chicago Street and also put a bit in to direct um, uh, a show at Memorial Opera House. Um, uh, but right now I'm just going to take a break. Uh, it's <laughs> Doing two musicals back-to-back is a lot, so I'm going to enjoy the the winter season and just take a little bit of a breather that, of right now. that sounds like a good idea that yeah. that's a lot to do between those two musicals and those are big productions so i think that's great well anything else you want to leave us with you want to talk about the cast a little bit or the different parts that are involved or anything about the technical yes um with the show, like we have an amazing cast. We um, we do have we have actually nine actors that are in there because we do have two um, 
um, actors that are playing the same part, um, just due to scheduling and things like that. Um, and just like the movie, it does follow the characters that are in the movie, and there are a lot of, and, and that's what makes the show so fun, because the movie has so many inconsistencies that in the three films, the actress that plays Linda is played by three different actresses, and then also two char- three characters from the first, no, I, yeah, three characters from the first film are totally eliminated in the second film. Like, they, like, they didn't even exist. So, um, it's just, that's kind of an interesting thing for people that are fans of the movie. Um, the technical aspects, there's, like, like we don't want to give too much away, um, but it was definitely um, trying to figure out ways to do things without spending a lot of money on effects. Because anyone who kind of does this kind of work or, or um, works at haunted houses or, or um, does um, squib effects or things like that, uh, it can become very costly, especially when you're trying to um, work on a budget. And so um, we had uh, um, Marty Weisenbacher who came down and really helped us, you know, kind of figure out some of the effects that we wanted to do um, for the Splashdown and also some other things um, for the audience. And then we also um, had... You know, Carrie Ann uh, Valukas was helping us with some of the effects, and Julie, um, Jen, um, I'm going to misspell her last name, so I'm not going to even say it, uh, <laughs> is, uh, helped us out with some of the effects as well. Um, and a lot of YouTube clips, too, what, looking up, well, how do we do this? And um, we made it all possible, which is good. Uh, and just with live theater, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, um, but they've been working very well for us so far. And uh, we, we hope it still continues. Great. Now, who all is involved besides you as the director? You've got your assistant uh, is Matt Valukas, I take it? Matt Valukas is my assistant director. Right. Our choreographer is uh, Julie Henry, who is great. Lee Myers is our uh, music director. Um, uh, so we have a lot of really great people working on this. Um, our actors, uh, I know I'm going to miss somebody. Uh, so Tyler, help me out if I forget someone. Who's uh, doing costumes? Have... <laughs> That's got to be um, fun to figure out. Yes. Uh, so we have um, my husband on the show, um, Andrew Glorioso. He's playing Scotty. Uh, Amanda Elkins is playing um, Annie. Uh, our Cher- our Shelleys are um, Bobby Sue Kamachkov. Kamachkov. She's going to kill me that I've been <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then we also have Samantha Bean. Um, Cheryl is played by Ariel. Um, my my favorite little her last name is. Ariel Luxburg. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then um, Linda is um, Lisa Zandy. And then we have Ed is played by Nate Hendrick. And Judah McQueen is playing our um, Jake, good old reliable Jake. Right. I think that's, that's everybody. Now, what about makeup? Are, is everybody doing their own makeup? Or do you have somebody coming in there and helping out with some of these uh, cool makeup You're talking effects? to him. Well, ah! talking to him. Yeah. Oh, you really are doing it all, aren't you? Well, we try. We, I mean, we... we um, we work with but the skills we have so yeah the makeup is being done by me we i did have some assistance from carrie ann lucas as well with some of the effects um for the makeup but i'm backstage making people up as we go because what's unique with this show is that the makeup is basic when you start and then it starts to get progressively more right that's what i was going to say so. there's a lot of i'm assuming costumes as well you start out in just your basic college kid outfits but as they get a little more crazy their costumes oh, yeah. also evolve during the show. Yes, very much so, very much so. Now, the music in this show, Tyler, mm-hmm. is it more uh, just basic musical, or is there, like, a theme to this? Is it um, jazz or, uh, you know, rap, anything like that? What can we expect? It's great. Uh, just about every song kind of has a different style to it. Um, it I, I don't know if I could really nail down one theme Pretty much every song okay. is hilarious, a lot of laughs, a lot of uh, really good choreography and, and, and jokes in them. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very different, uh, different styles to each song. So. Which is fun, because I like the fact that you're going to be laughing a lot. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's people probably falling apart and dying yep. <laughs> and body parts and blood and all kinds of fun things. And you don't really always think of that as being no, hilarious, no, but it, yet yeah. it can be. That's awesome. So are we super excited for this weekend? Oh, absolutely, yes. Now, isn't there <laughs> yeah. some kind of a, an opening night party that goes along with showing up for this? 
Yes, afterwards, um, Maiden and Lincoln is our host for after the um, after we close. Uh, we'll be heading over to Maiden and Lincoln for the after after party um, as from from Evil Dead. All right, that sounds great. Well, we are super excited about this. I'm hoping. If there are still tickets available, I'd like to come on Friday night, so I'm hoping that I can call as soon as the show is over and reserve my ticket so I can come out and see you guys. Um, I cannot thank you guys enough for coming out and being on here. We're looking forward to it. Uh, Evil Dead, the musical, is opening on October 5th. If you want tickets, again, you can call 219-464-1636, extension 1, and it's over there at the Chicago Street Theater right here in Valparaiso, Indiana. Please, this show is selling out like crazy, so make sure to call and reserve your seats now if you want to go. And again, it's not recommended for, what what age would you say? I would say 17 and old, older only. Okay. Um, but again, I'm not a parent, so... <laughs> Right. By all means. So parents who know their kids and if they're coming out with their kids, you know, to experience it together, you could probably go with 15 or 16, but you know your own kids. So yeah, there you go. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much oh, for coming you. out and uh, being a part of this. Thanks, Mike, for calling in. We really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Oh, thank you. That was great. We're looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait. Very exciting. So. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Well, I think we're going to go to a station break just a smidge early so that when we come back, we can concentrate on my next guests. So we're going to go to station break right now, and we'll be right back. All right, everybody. Hi, we're back with Spotlight on the Arts. And my guests now are from Footlight Players in Michigan City. And we have with us Bobby Comandera, yes. who I believe is also directing the show that's yes, going to be opening up. And Elena Loretson. Is that how you say your last name? Loretson. Okay. I, you know, I'm friends with her and I know her <laughs> and I love her so much and I can't even say her last name in public. But anyway. Um, so Footlight Players has a show opening up this Friday as well. Yes. And it is called Dark of the Moon. Right. And uh, Elena is playing the lead. I understand. Barbara, Barbara. Allen. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, Bobby, tell yes. us about the show and how it came to be at Footlight. And well, um, it's really a mystical fairy tale to a certain extent. It is also a little dark and... We have viewer, um, what do you call it? Uh, viewer discretion. Viewer discretion right. is advised. There Got is, it. There's nothing in the language, but there are adult situations that happen. Okay. And uh, it's about a witch boy um, who wants to become human because he has seen Barbara Allen and has fallen in love with her. Ooh. And so the conjure people do decide to help him out, and he can be a, a human for one year. And then he'll remain it as long as Barbara Allen is true to him for the one year. Um, it has a lot of um, insight into what's going on in politics and everything today with how people are being um, shunned or if they're different, uh, how they're being reacted to by society. And it takes place in the Appalachian Mountains where these people aren't very educated and of course they think, of course, that John is still a witch, and so they are basically shunning him and her. So it's a whole year's uh, length of the movie, and you're going to have to find out if Barbara stays true to him or not. Ooh. <laughs> now, this was originally produced on Broadway in 1945? Yes, it's an old show. Uh, it was revamped, I think, in the 60s. 
Uh, I read it in the 70s. I just read the script, never saw it, but I fell in love with the script back when I was in high school. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you found out about it and how yeah. you knew about this, because this is not a show that I'm familiar right. with, and I know a lot of theater things. <laughs> I've never heard of Dark of the Moon, and now I'm super intrigued. That I've, and I've only seen two productions of it ever, and both times was not where my vision went when I saw when I first read the show. Right. The way we're doing it is my vision, and it's not as dark as I've seen it. And there's two witches and two conjured people, and they were always like the Wicked Witch of the West from Wizard of Oz and old crone people. And they are supposed to be seducing John, the witch boy, so I couldn't see that. So I have them more sexual beings or more uh, feminine. Okay. And the conjured people I always saw as like maybe gypsies more than old crones. So the costumes for the four of them are pretty elaborate and fun. Uh, and then the rest of the people are just town folks, so they're more plain. Um, there is an awful lot of comedy in the show. It's listed as a drama, but there is a lot of fun stuff and fun characters, which I brought out. And believe it or not, although it's not a musical, there's 12 songs in it. Well, I was going to say, at one time, <laughs> it was kind of, early on mm -hmm. as a musical. Right, it's got a lot of the old church songs and a lot of the old, like, on top of old Smokey, um, Mountain Dew, a lot of those old country songs, and it's it's fun. It's just, there are some darker aspects to it. Okay. But it's still a good show, and um, I can't say too much about this young lady next to me because I've seen her where... She would hide behind her mother. She was the shyest little thing in the world, and she has grown into, I think, one of the best actresses in Northwest Indiana. Yeah, so and I'm she's really beautiful, so the fact it. that anybody wouldn't fall in love with mm -hmm. her at first sight. Of course, John, this witch boy character, is right. going to fall in love with her. I can't imagine somebody not falling in love with her. Now, how large of a cast do we have in this show? It's a cast of 21 altogether. Um, uh, the lead, uh, John Boy, or John, John the Witch Boy, he's... Um, new to the theater to a certain extent. He hasn't done anything on stage uh, for probably close to 20 years. Oh, He's wow. only like 28. He did stuff in grade school. Uh, but he has stage managed for us before, and he's had small parts in little fundraisers that we have. But uh, he's doing a wonderful job. They have great chemistry together. And I just have a, I have a cast of brand new people that have never been on stage before and people that are almost as old as me doing stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, so somebody in their 40s, basically. Oh, yeah, 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 uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. More double that almost. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a musical director for something like this when you have songs in it, or is it... No, in fact, Lee Meyer, who's doing oh, exactly. the music for Evil Dead, yes. he came in and played a lot of the stuff that we taped, and we've been using his tape. Okay. But I have two guitarists in the show, and they are doing most of the music backstage, and uh, chorus is singing in the microphones. And then there's a church uh, revival going on, and the entire cast sings like three church songs on stage. Okay. So all the things that are involved in this, obviously you have a beautiful set, I'm assuming. Oh, the set, I think, is probably the best set we've ever had on our stage. Oh. It is just gorgeous. Uh, well, I've seen a lot of gorgeous sets on yeah. that stage, so I'm excited to come and see this yeah. one. It's a small set, and how to get everything on and off and is... It's amazing. It's because they do it very quickly. Uh, the, the show does not slow down ever. It just keeps on going. And it probably runs two hours or two hours and 15 minutes at the most with okay. an intermission. All right. Good. And Joe Blanchard is your assistant director? Joe Blanchard is the assistant director, and he also is my conjure man. Oh. Yeah, because my assistant exciting. had to drop out because of work, so I asked him. He's uh, assistant directed with me before, and we worked real well together. Good. And who did the costumes for this? Laura Meyer uh, did the costumes, and they're pretty spectacular. I really, there's, they're very fun. The witches are very fun. They're very different than you won't think of them as actual which is more sirenesses okay so it's not so much like in shakespeare the conjuring right. witches and everything mm -hmm. like that oh excellent elena yeah. tell us about your character and about your background and what made you want to do this part um barbara allen is I'm trying to think of how to say it nicely she's 
a floozy. Oh, okay. She's just, it's like in Oklahoma. She's just a girl who can't say no. Is exactly. that it? All right. Okay. She she enjoys men's company. Okay. And it's made explicit throughout the show. <laughs> um, but she falls in love with the witch boy and tries to have this nice relationship with him. And of course, the town people ruin it because why wouldn't they? Of course, because they're just jelly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, I really wanted to be in the show because. This was my first chance at a lead role. I've never, I've mostly been in like the chorus, and the biggest role I had was when Bobby directed Moon Glow, and I played one of the supporting roles. Okay. But it was really exciting to have the chance to at least try and get the lead role, and when I did get it, it was really exciting. That's, yeah, of course <laughs> it is. It's always exciting to have the lead role. Now, you've had quite a little bit of a background in theater as well. Yeah. I remember doing a show there where you were helping do sound and things like that. Right. So, I've actually I've I didn't do a lot before I started with Footlight. I did a few shows in grade school, but that was it. And then when I was 14, about 4 years ago, I started working backstage and I got more and more involved and more on stage and in the tech booth and stuff like that. Right. And then you just graduated from high school. Yes, I just graduated. So what does the future hold for you? Um, right now I'm in my gap year to give myself a little break and to be able to do theater and fun stuff. And then I do Ivy Tech for a year, and then I go down to ISU and get my nursing degree. Nursing degree. Perfect. That's awesome. I'm very excited about it. Good. Tell us um, about the rehearsals and, and things. How, how has it been going, and how excited are you for opening night? Rehearsals have actually been pretty fun. Um, a lot of the cast is just really fun and easy to get along with. Um, we had a little few hiccups here and there, but I mean, well, what show doesn't, doesn't. exactly? <laughs> um, but I'm really excited for opening night. We have our soft opening tomorrow, and then opening on Friday. I believe I will be there for yes, that soft opening, and I'm very excited too. I'm very excited, excited, too. <laughs> I'm really excited to see how it goes, how it goes with an audience, what they react. Too. Oh, it makes such a difference. When you're right. on stage, you know, you can rehearse all you want, but the minute you have that interaction with the audience and you hear that laughter and you hear that <gasps> gasping and, and the people ask, you always get the people going, oh my gosh, did you see that? Did you see what just happened? And they talk I mean, back like, to yeah, you. they do, but it's, it, that's the joy of doing live theater is exactly. having that interaction and getting to play off an audience. It makes things so much more exciting. Oh, and, absolutely. And what, what kind of a cool costumes do you get to wear um my costumes are pretty pretty natural since i'm just i'm the town part of the town folk okay. um i have a nice little dress at the beginning and then i do later on have to have a little pregnancy belly so that's a fun costume um i actually i only have three costumes so it's not very intricate for me right it's appalachian people it's right. taking place in right. the mountains there and so it, it wouldn't be elaborate it's not right. like you're playing cinderella or something like exactly. that <laughs> giant gowns and everything all right so bobby yes tell us about footlight theater and how long it's been around and i know you and and bill have been involved in it for forever yeah, it and that way. tell us about some of the things you've got coming up and and your seasons and well, Footlight's been around. This is our 69th season. This is our second show of our season. Um, we're already looking at shows for our 70th year because uh, we pick our shows. We have a committee that reads. Last year, we read 41 shows. And uh, so this year, we're already up to like 28 or 29, and we have just started. So and we, uh, we get very pretty serious about that. Our upcoming show is going to be a very, very funny Christmas show called Double Wide Texas Christmas. Double Wide is the name of a city in Texas, but it's the smallest city ever. They only have 10 residents, but they want Ooh. to become an actual city and be put on the map. So they enter a manger contest and they first wanted to do like a space war spa manger contest, <laughs> but somebody else in Texas took that away from them. So they became Texas on the Alamo. It's, it's very, very strange, but it's a very fun group. Uh, we've done this author's shows quite often, and we've almost sold out every time. It's the Jones, Hope, and Wooten. Oh, Wooten. gosh, they're amazing. They, they are have so great, many fun funny. shows. And so, uh, and it was, it's a very strange thing because Dark of the Moon was originally supposed to be directed by Chris Wybrew, but he had a job problem where he worked in the summer and he couldn't do the rehearsal time. So I took over that show, and he was going to do the show, tech, uh, the Texas show. Well, then now he just came to us, 
and his real job, where he works normally, just got shifted to a night shift where he has to work till 10 o'clock. Oh, no. And so I ended up agreeing that I'm going to direct the next show also. But I, I love it because it's going from one a different type of show Absolutely. into basically slapstick. Right. And I've directed their uh, their authors' shows before, and I love them. So Can you tell us what other shows are coming up for this season? Right. Uh, in um, March... Yeah, in March we're doing Arsenic and Old Lace. Oh, great we're job. We're hoping that you're going to come out and audition. Oh, well, we'll see. And, <laughs> and then in May we're doing, oh, a musical of musicals, the musical, which I don't know if you know the show, <laughs> but it is hysterical. It, it's like, it's the same show written in five different styles, one of them being Rodgers and Hammerstein, one of them being Sondheim, Rodgers and Hart, and it, they're all five hysterical but there's like four main characters that play the same role but in different ways i guess okay mm -hmm. oh my gosh how much fun is that <laughs> all right so bobby yes now the theater has been around for you said 69 years yes how many of those years have you been a part of it oh um Probably close to 25 of them. Okay. Believe it or not, I wasn't there at the very beginning. <laughs> now, was it the, the theater hasn't always been in the location it's at, I'm assuming. No. Uh, in fact, uh, Dune Summer Theater and Footlight were one theater at one time, and they were the Long Beach Community Theater. And they split off, and Dunes went to Summer Theater, and Footlight went to Winter Theater. Now we're, now we're a full year round. We're doing right. shows all year long. And I think Dunes is trying to get that going with right. them. Uh, it started out that I know of at, uh, in, they went to different places. Like they did shows at Marquette High School. They did shows at Long Beach Community Center. And they ended up being at Cool Spring Institute for 39 years, I think. And then, and we went from a year-to-year -year lease, and then all of a sudden, they wouldn't renew our lease. So we had to pack up and move within like three months and find a place. And we ended up finding a Central School, which was also where Boys and Girls Club, and it was a community center, where they had a gym with a stage on it. So we did that for two years. The only problem is, is that every time that we did a show, we had to take all the lights down during the week because they had basketball games in the gym. Uh -huh. So we had to reset everything, and we were really looking for our own theater. And we tried a couple places, and I was on the committee, and we found an old Subway sandwich shop right on Franklin Street, and we gutted it ourselves, and we had uh, a lot of people and community help, and we turned it into the theater. We never lost a month. We were able to open right away with our first production, and we've been doing so ever since. Yeah, it's a so. great little theater. Love it there. All right, so tell people if they want to come out and see this amazing show, Dark of the Moon, how they go about getting tickets and... Well, they can call the theater at 219-874-4035 and make reservations. The show dates are October 5, 6, and 7, and then 11, 12, 13, and 14. The second week, we do have a Thursday performance, which is $10 a seat. Uh, the other nights, they're $15 or $10 for children 12 and under. Right. But remember, it's, you know, it's up to you if you want to bring children. That's um, our Fridays and Saturdays are, and Thursdays are at 7.30, and our Sundays are at 2 o'clock. Um, or you could go on our website, which is www footlightplayers.org okay and you can make reservations that way also excellent and tell people where the theater is located well it's at 1705 franklin street which is the main drag of michigan city um and it's not it's it's very easy to find it's got a huge big yellow awning that says footlight theater on it it's an intimate theater it's uh, only 80 seats so we definitely want you to make reservations yes definitely yeah, we, we and we do have a tendency to sell out so yes. that way if you walk in and you're coming if you're coming from Velpo you want to make sure you have reservations absolutely now when you're not doing theater Bobby what are you doing what, oh, well, what is I'm... your background <laughs> and and how did you get involved in all this and Give well, us all I've, the good I've been doing theater since 1962 when I was in grade school. That's how old I am. Um, and basically, I thought I got the lead in a show 
because I was talented, but I was the only one that didn't need to have a microphone because I had a big mouth. <laughs> so that's how I got involved with theater. But I got the theater bug that bit me. Uh, I started doing shows in Michigan City because I lived in Gary almost my whole life and went to the dunes and uh, with a friend who was auditioning. I wasn't planning to audition, and I got a role in Carousel. I played Jigger um, at dunes, and I fell in love with Michigan City. So I moved here, and I auditioned once at Footlight, and I didn't get a role, and I was told that it was precast, and I said I would never darken Footlight's door again. <laughs> And here I am. I've been president for yes. 18 years. <laughs> and um, I've, I've just enjoyed the group because we give everybody a chance. And we really work with everybody. Uh, we do workshops. Um, like I said, Elena has grown so much in two years because yes. we've given her that chance. Uh, the guy like that's playing Witch Boy, he hasn't been on stage forever, but he's doing a wonderful job. And it we try to work with all our directors really getting them that way and in fact our snicker and lace and musical of musicals have two brand new directors that have never directed before but they have done assistant directing where they'll work with experienced directors and mirror them and learn from them absolutely and just like what it was a trevor that was here yeah. said earlier that Tyler, every yeah. director does it differently sure but at least they have a background where it's like, okay, this works, this doesn't work. And that's how I learned how to direct. I picked everything that I loved that directors did, and I kept it. And everything I hated that directors <laughs> did, I took it away. Well, because every director should have a vision of, of what they want. When you fall in love with a script mm -hmm. and you want to do it, you have an idea in your brain of Absolutely. what you want and who you want and, and, and the types of people that you want to have involved. Well, so. What's funny is with Dark of the Moon, one of our members who is a viewer for our awards night, he said, I'm gonna to have to not view because I really don't like this show, Dark of the Moon, and I'm, I'm almost gonna to refuse to see it. I'm like, okay, do me a favor, stay on as a viewer and come see preview night or any night and just, I'm going to do it differently than it's ever been done before. Go in with an open mind. Right, and a couple of the actors have came up to me, they said, we're really glad you took it this way because we were like nervous about even being in this show. <laughs> like, it's not a horrible show. It's a beautiful no, it fairy is. tale. Yeah. It's got it's sad in a certain way. Some of the endings are sad and some of the things happen, but it really is a beautiful show to see the relationship grow. Excellent. And again, that opens up this Friday, Friday mm -hmm. and it's at seven thirty. And it was written by Howard Richardson, and then kind of reimagined again by William Burney, which is his cousin, I believe. Right. Yes. Excellent. And gosh, we still have about 10 minutes. So tell me some theater stories, Bobby. You should have a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, another thing that we do at Footlight is we have a, yes, tell uh, us about. a musical ensemble, a vocal ensemble that I, I also direct. I was just going to ask about that. <laughs> and it's called The Footnotes. And uh, we, we have already eight gigs at the Lighthouse Place. Uh, they pay us to, and we dress in Victorian costumes and sing four-part a cappella harmony. And we're going to have a big Christmas or holiday concert, really, on the 29th of December. And we're going to be having Jacob Griffin, who just won the youth division of Who's Your Star? Oh, As our soloist, wonderful. and then the footnotes will do backup for him. I so have seen some exciting. of those costumes, mm -hmm. and they're phenomenal. And, the, and, it's just, and it's just a bunch of fun. Yeah. And if anybody wants to join the footnotes, we rehearse on Sundays at 5 o'clock to 7, every Sunday. So this Sunday is going to be a long day for most of us that are in the show and doing the footnotes. But um, it's fun. I mean, it's just a group of people that we originally just wanted... We did Cinderella together, and everybody enjoyed the music rehearsals that we said, let's just do this every week. So we did start it. We would, had no idea that we were going to be good enough to even perform. And the footnotes actually was Northwest Indiana's, um, like three or four years ago for Tourist uh, Bureau, we were asked to be Northwest Indiana's representative, and we went to Indianapolis for the tourism and performed like three times for them. Oh, that's awesome. So, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, there's always, and believe me, there's always something to do, and we could always use any member 
If they want to come join us, uh, we have a lot of good people that just volunteer and do stuff. And that's what the, the group's all about. It's a very community organized group. That's the best thing about community theater is no matter what your skill set or no matter whether you want to be on stage and, and have that av ability to want to do that. I mean, there's things to do behind the set. Oh, very much. And there's people very that much. don't want to ever go on stage, which is my husband, Bill, does not want to go on stage ever, but he's our treasure. He's been our treasure oh, for yeah. 23 years, and he just does all this background work. Now, the show that you've got coming up for Christmas time, mm -hmm. that's double wide, it's not a musical. It's a, it's a no, play. it's a play. Now, if people want to come out and audition for that or Thank get you. involved in that, what do they, how do they do that? Auditions are this Sunday, the 7th, oh my goodness. and Monday, the 8th. Uh, and they are from 7 o'clock to 9. So, uh, I please, come out. It's, there's, I think it's six women, four men that I need. And they are from ages 20 to 80. All right. So, and I mean, then do they have to be prepared with anything? Do they need to bring anything? No, it's just cold readings from the script. Um, and as soon as you start reading the script, you're going to start cracking up. Oh, so, my gosh. So, I yeah. mean, if you read the script, you'll want to be in the show. It's just a lot of fun. Great. And when is that running so that people can that figure out if that works? That the first two weekends in December. Okay. And where, again, do they need to come for the audition? At 1705 Franklin Street in Michigan City, Indiana. Uh, it's, it's a footlight theater. We're um, right on the main drag, and it's a big, huge yellow awning. You can't miss us. And again, if you need tickets, how do they get those tickets? You call 874-4035. That's a 219 area code. Or go to www.footlightplayers.org. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for you, coming Kelly. out. Thank you. We really appreciate it. I am so looking forward to tomorrow mm -hmm. night seeing my little Elena in her <laughs> leading role and coming out and well, spending some time. We appreciate your support. I mean, oh, absolutely. I love Footlight. You know that. I've done quite a few shows there, and mm -hmm. it's almost like a second home to me. Please be there. Again. Yes. I, well, I, if it works into my <laughs> schedule, believe me, I am missing theater so badly right now. I'm just jonesing to do a show, and I just have this crazy schedule that's not allowing me to do that. But. Anyway, thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. That was a long drive for you to come out here, and I really appreciate it. It is what it is. I like that, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of fun things to do here while you're here. And again, that's Dark of the Moon, uh, Footlight Players, 1705 Franklin Street in Michigan City. Um, for those of you who are also looking for other shows that are coming up and want to get some more information, you can also go to needif.org to find out about some of the other theaters in the area that have uh, events coming up and shows coming up. There's always, like we said, you can be an assistant director, you can help build sets, you can help do costumes or makeup, or if you want to be brave and get on stage and and play a different part and be somebody totally different than who you are. And a lot of times if you're a shy person, doing theater is the best thing because when you're on stage, you're not you. You're playing somebody else and that's the fun of it. You get to you can be an evil person, you can be the um not not uh little crazy boy crazy kind of girl like uh Barbara <laughs> Allen is. Um you can you can be the the funny person, the witch, the whatever. I mean, there's so many different fun parts that you can be, and it's fun to be somebody different than yourself. So get out there, uh, get involved. Again, that's NEETF.org, N-I-E-T-F.org. That stands for Northwest Indiana Excellence in Theater Foundation. And again, there are also other theaters like Footlight that are not a part of the NEETF organization, but there's. Um, Footlight, there's Canterbury, there's uh, the LaPorte Little Theater, there's the Drama Group in Chicago Heights, so there's all kinds of theaters. Just get on your phones or on your computers and Google theaters in Northwest Indiana. Find out what events are going on, where to go, what shows you want to go see, and go out and have some fun. Enjoy these amazing, talented people who donate their time because they're not paid to do these things. And that's the other thing is, this is a passion. When you get involved, it's something that you, you just can't not do. And so you go out there, you go to these rehearsals every single night for six or seven weeks. You learn songs, you learn dances, you learn your lines, and then you go out there and for two or three weekends, you perform all that work. But it's something that you have to do when you get involved. And then you form wonderful life Oh my gosh, I mean, yes. Wonderful my, my theater friends are my family by choice. They really are. We are definitely 
the, we put the community in community theater because we really are a community. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody so much for listening in to Spotlight on the Arts. We will see you again next Wednesday at noon. And for now, this is Callie and my, my co-host who doesn't ever say anything, Bill Moran. And we thank you for tuning in. <laughs>